Hello again, family and friends and YouTubers. John's afternoon swim. Hey, buddy. He's got a full beard going there. Very handsome man. Just like his earthly father. <laughs> but we're looking good here this afternoon. Be a very beautiful day. Tower and pool. Excellent condition. We just got back from the Polog again. Today we went in and took care of our vehicle registration. We uh, we were actually a couple years late on that registration uh, due to uh, circumstances out of our control. And uh, one time we were pulled over at a at a checkpoint and. The officer, because many people, if you've ever been by a checkpoint, sometimes they'll have pop-up checkpoints here and there, different places on the national highway. And this was a, like a surprise uh, checkpoint. So there's many, many motorcycles, hundreds, motorcycles and vehicles, both big and small, pulled over the side of the road, a, like half kilometer, quarter kilometer before the checkpoint because... They either don't have a driver's license or they don't have their registration or, or plates or or whatever they're out of compliance right and so they just pull over the side of the road and they wait until the checkpoint's gone and then and then they they're on their way again that's the way it is here in at least the mindanao area and i'm sure it's probably like that in the majority of places in the philippines but uh we were out of compliance and we knew it but and I had left even my, my wall at home. I didn't have my driver's license, nothing. But we went right up to the officer at the checkpoint. And, and uh, I was, you know, I always say, good afternoon, sir. I give him a salute. And, and uh, he was, he said, could I see your driver's license? I said, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I left my driver's license. Oh, that's not good. He says that to me. And then, uh, my wife's saying something to him in Visaya, kind of like begging him, oh, sir, uh, we're sorry, blah, blah, blah. And let me see your driver, uh, your registration then, and we showed it to him. It's, you know, a couple years in the, you know, expired. And my wife's begging to him or something, and, and then he said, well, okay, and thank you for pulling over anyways, and we were very respectful, everything. And I said, look at all the person not even coming to the checkpoint. And, and he's, he's like very annoyed w with all the people pulling over and not even having the, f to, you know, the, the guts to face him face to face because they're going to get in trouble because they're out of compliance, right? But what do they do anyway? The officer with us, I never have my license. We're late on our registration. We don't even have our pl license plates. My v van, we were in my van, and that's, we bought that in 2016. And we have never received an official license plate even, ever since 2016. I kid you not. And that's some crazy stuff right there in itself, right? Uh... And we have never received, a, and it's like they don't even care. So it's like there is zero enforcement, guys. Just telling you, at least in this area there is. I've heard of stories where, uh, like in Dumaguete, where all there's tons of foreigners, they, they'll uh, impound your vehicle or your, or your motorcycle, and they won't even give it back to you. So... It's from one province to the next, one island to the next. It's completely different. So I, I really, it's, I'm confused on the whole system here in the Philippines of, you know, well, how can it be one way, one place, and a completely opposite in another place? And that, but that's the way it is in the Philippines. So just a fair warning to you guys. Anyways, we went to the, <laughs> and this is another thing, guys. And this is the how the corruption and uh, how it is everywhere, and it's this way in the Philippines too. And 
Okay, so we we go to the to the like the DMV and we have a what's called they have what's called fixers. I mean, you have to even get a, an emissions test done. And it's cuz we're behind a couple years, whatever it was, 2-3 years in our registration. We got a hold of this friend of the friend of a family that's in the system there and he's a so-called fixer. Well, the fixer negotiates with us what the what the what the total going to be and it would have been close to 20,000 pesos if we were just to go to the main office without a fixer. But because we're going to go to the fixer, we got it down to 13,000 pesos. So we saved ourselves by not complying with the law and renewing every single year and going a couple of three years late, we were able to save money. So <laughs> I'm just telling you guys what happened with us. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Uh, the whole system's corrupt and there's no enforcement, at least around here, that I've ever seen. But, you know... If, if, and it, this, is, this is the deal. If I have the money, and God's blessed me with the, the money to be able to, to obey man's laws, it, majority of the time I'm going to pay it. If I truly owe it, and if there's some, any kind of validity whatsoever in the law, where I, where I feel that I should pay it, I do. If the law is completely corrupt and against the laws, it's, it's the own laws of the country, then I majority of the time I don't comply. Because why do you want to comply with a, a law that's criminal against the true law of the country, but the, the law that is on the books is against the original law that says you don't have to pay it and you shouldn't pay it? Because that's what's in the constitution of the country or whatever, like the income tax in the U.S. That's one good, big, huge example. So anyways, what I'm saying is, when, at the end, you're going to be judged by God. You're not going to be judged by man. And, and it's, you, you're going to take the consequences if you want to get away with, you know, and able to get around the system without complying with man's law. I, I really need to get a different way to hold this iPad. Sorry, guys, it's all over the place. And uh, anyways, it's, up, it's between you and God about that. So it says many places in the Bible, quickly uh, pay the people that, or adhere to them, or give them respect, or give them reverence to who stops you on the roadways and tells you to comply and quickly agree with them and go on your way. I, I forget what chapter, what book in the Bible is like that, but, and it's true. But if there's no one stopping you in the roadway, telling you you need to do this or that, basically no enforcement whatsoever, then why would you pay it? You know what I'm saying? If, and that's why this is, this is another reason. I had a video before, and I'll show you guys again. This is why I have this, and it's all over the gates and doors of many people, many houses, many buildings in the, United, in, in the Philippines, is this right here. Post no bills. See that? And that is for that purpose right there, that when people come to your place or your place of business or your home that and they're trying to post any kind of a lien or anything if you have that posted on your gate or on your front door they can't do it legally they cannot charge you if they're trying to post a bill against you for any reason any kind of a levy or a lien and, and that that is derived from in the U.S. If you look at some of the old 1800 photos, you'll also see that so the same kind of signs on houses and businesses in the U.S. The same applied back then, guys. It's just that the U.S. has become so brainwashed over the years, all that was lost. All the truth 
on taxation and billing and liens and all that was lost because uh, nowadays in the U.S. it's all corporations and that's cor a corporation is a thought of Satan made made uh, carnate means that all corporations and especially the the whole conjuring of witchcraft that is in the legal system today with lawyers lawyers and corrupt judges I mean that's everywhere guys I really need to sit down because I'm my arm's getting tired of and I'm feeling like I'm gonna drop this iPad sorry guys but that's what you got going in the US right now it's witchcraft and thievery and every foul spirit because there it's a lack of God they've kicked God out of the entire country of the US there used to be uh, the Ten Commandments used to be in the schools used to be in the courthouses used to be everywhere friends and now you have nothing now there's there's nothing in the US as far as any remnants left of, of Jesus Christ Yahweh Yeshua or, or God Father Almighty it's all gone so Jesus has really been teaching me lately guys is that uh, Jesus is within you he Yeshua is inside of you and in order to have get the kingdom after you've passed and then once you receive it here on earth by accepting Christ repenting of your sin and following uh, God's commandment and God's word and God's voice you need to give that in order to keep that kingdom you need to give it away in, in his with his love that's what Jesus said through his love give the kingdom away and that, that's how you keep it is by giving it giving your life away is how you keep your life in the kingdom if you don't give the kingdom away by serving and loving your neighbor which is his highest second highest commandment and by serving your neighbor and loving your neighbor feed, feeding the poor uh, caring for the sick visiting the prisoners in prison if you're not doing any of that stuff then you're not giving your life away on this earth in order to receive your life in heaven and that so that's the second part of, of staying saved by Christ you have to then every day give your life away giving your life for someone else just like Christ gave he's the example gave his life for us to be able to go to go to heaven and have the kingdom of heaven and that's what it's all about guys and what is what's going on right now is that we're just on the doorstep I mean literally between nuclear annihilation or God's wrath coming down in what they've done to the US with all these huge fault zones ready to have about the biggest earthquake that the US has ever seen in the history of the world it, this Arcadia zone which is off the coast of Washington and Oregon and uh, then that's almost basically connected to the San Andreas and then uh, that's the western US and the eastern US is the uh, New Madrid zone right which is the whole Mississippi Valley when that when they one goes they're all gonna go and that probably touch off the Yellowstone uh, that whole underground uh, super volcano so this is what we're looking at guys today and uh, the the wrath of God is on the doorstep uh, you can see it if you can't see it you're absolutely blind people are walking around like zombies looking at their phones and, and they're in complete denial you know they're all they're hopped up on whatever uh, pharmaceutical drugs or illegal drugs and they're, they're constantly uh, my, on some kind of mind altering substance and uh, they are walking like a zombie and it, it confirms it when they're in the, their head is in their phone all day long and they're, they're completely separated from God completely and that's what you got going especially in the US it's, it's a lot of that in the entire world but in the Bible the mystery Babylon is this is where all this 
is derived from and it shoots out from the U.S. into the entire world. That's why the harlot is Mystery Babylon, the U.S., combined with U.K. and the, the financial cabal created state, political state of Israel today. It has nothing to do with, the only thing that it has to do with God in the political state of Israel today is the fact that it's part of God's end time plan to have this evil uh, state of that's that they chose the name of Israel they meaning the Rothschilds the super rich families that con has controlled finance for hundreds of years and, and this is where this is all derived from guys and this the communists has completely taken over America they have and it's grown even exponentially every single year ever since they took out JFK which is the CIA and all this deep state these these three-lettered agencies that are within the US they're the ones running the show you think that the, the walking dead of Biden is the ones con, uh, the leader of the US I don't even think so I mean they are poking the bear of Russia every single day, taunting him, messing with him, like messing with Sasquatch. Pretty soon, Sasquatch, which is the bear of Russia, is going to totally decimate and take out everyone. They have supersonic missiles, and they have 27... This is the reports now that the, uh, Russia has 27 supersonic uh, submarines they have supersonic missiles with nu nu nuclear warhead tipped missiles in what I think it's uh, over a hundred nuke nukes that can come out of the 12 or 16 missiles that they have in each sub so 27 subs in the Pacific 11 of these subs in the Atlantic and all they have to do is release, and within five minutes, it's an, it's an all-out, complete devastation and annihilation of the U.S. And once they take out the head of the, the NATO snake and the, the power of the West, everything in the world instantly changes overnight. Every single thing that you can imagine that you are planned for your retirement, anything you got in the stock market or the bank is gone instantly, overnight, guys. And this is probably what's going to happen. This is, if it's not that, it's the whole financial system. <laughs> what, hon? What, hon? <laughs> I'm done of my business there outside. Good, oh. you should. With, <laughs> with the government, you mean? Hello, yes. <laughs> so... My wife, Lilibeth, had to take care of the highway department that's going to be road widening in front of our house here within the next six months. And they promised us 30,000 pesos to destroy our two driveway entries and part of our fence line going off to the north when they're going to do a road widening, which may, might pay for that to repair it. But I doubt it. It'll probably take, my estimates, it would probably be more like 50,000 pesos to re, 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 uh, you know, fix the fence line and to, to re pour the concrete for the driveways. But we'll see. It might be less than that. We'll, we'll uh, take it when it comes. So at least they're given something. And you don't have a choice of negotiation. You either accept it or, or you don't take it if you don't take it they can file a case on you and then take it without giving you anything but there's a lot of property owners that have these massive trees i mean like anywhere from four to eight foot across at the stump <clears throat> massive trees that the government only wants to give them like uh twenty thousand per tree when they're worth 80 to a hundred thousand pesos per tree you know, these massive old, old, hundred-year-old trees, right? So anyways, but that's what you get. You either got to let it draw out, fight them in court, and most, most likely you're going to lose, but you might be able to get an increase in what their original offer was to maybe even double what it was, and that's what most people are, are hoping for. 
when they take the government to court on that. So that's that's that whole situation. Anyways, she just got done because we had to show the highway department officials our tax property tax receipts, making sure that they were paid in full. And if it shows that they're paid in full, then then they can give us the money. And they have to give us 70% of the money, so they'll give us 20,000 pesos before they start destroying our driveway. And then once their the road is completely done, then they have to give us the other nine or 10,000 that's left. So that's the situation here. So uh, where was I then? Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're on the precipice, guys, and in order to, and then a lot of these people that say once saved, always saved, all that, it's, it's all lies, guys, all lies. And all this stuff on the internet about the uh, rapture coming and that God's going to take us away and we're all going to be swept up into the clouds. And all, this is all a half truth. That's what the serpent has, is a split tongue. It's a half truth. Half the tongue is speaking from God's word and the other half is a complete lie. A ha half truth is going to be all lie because it's going to get you the same place into hell. And that's what's going on right now with all that rapture and all that stuff being poofed away. That's all, that's all baloney, guys. And all I can say is focus on Jesus' words and the red letter editions of the Bible. Focus only on Jesus' words. The only time that we're caught up into the air with Christ is at the very end and it says that his elect that will the the great tribulation at the very end will be cut short for the elect's sake well for, why would they do it for the elect's sake it's because the elect his belief his true believers that still have the kingdom kingdom because they received the kingdom but they've given their life They've given it away on earth by giving the kingdom to other people, by serving them, feeding them, uh, visiting them in prison, uh, uh, helping the sick. They're on the, in the trenches. The believers are in the trenches loving their neighbor because that's the second highest commandment. After loving God, that's loving your neighbor and serving your neighbor. And if people aren't doing that, they're only getting half the, half the tongue. They're getting the truth of accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, but then once you have it, you have to give it away. Give it away to other people. If you're not doing that, you're going to hell, friend. That's what Jesus says. If you're not giving away the, your life on this earth to your neighbor, you're going to hell. And that's what the Christian church out there, majority of them are going to hell right now. Why? Because they go to church uh, one, two day, times a week, couple hours a week and they think that they're going to be saved and go to heaven. No, you have to give that away. You have to give it up. You have to, that's idolatry. Anything you're spending more time on than Christ Jesus in a day, that's your idol. That's, you're going against God's commandments right there. And you're not giving your life to, to your neighbor. So that's what I mean, friend. I love you only because the, the Father loves you. Because the Father is within me, and Jesus Christ is in the Father, so Jesus Christ is within me too. That's what he says. This is your temple. You're, it's inside of you. And if you, you don't, if you aren't giving your life away on this earth, you're dead. Your faith in, in Jesus is dead without the works that God says for you to do. Because as a new man in Christ, you will automatically do the works. It's not for your boasting. Any kind of boasting, that's... That's the Pharisees. That's what they do because they don't have the Christ and the Father within their hearts and within their souls, right? So they just, as a, as a, so they can show to other people, and that's your, your false works. That's your unrighteous works. That's what the difference is, and the, the church is teaching you guys a lie because it, without works, faith in Christ Jesus is dead, that's Jesus' words, guys. Start reading your red letter editions. Only look at Jesus Christ's words in the Bible. Don't be relying on Paul. Paul's got he was an apostle and he did some miracles in Jesus' name, but you you can't re, he's not the one saving you. It's Jesus Christ saving you. And Father God. 
It's not Paul. So don't rely on his words. Go to the source. Go to Jesus Christ's word. Otherwise, you're lost. And you're only believing half of the, the, the serpent's tongue, which is, yes, believe in Jesus Christ and you will be saved. But you won't be saved unless you give that away to your neighbor. Because why? Because you love the neighbor as just the, the same as yourself. That's the second highest commandment that Jesus commanded us to be, commanded us to do. So I'm sorry to say, friends, and that's why I, you can call me a liar. Go to the Word of God. Don't believe me. Go to the Word of God. And I'm trying, I'm, I love you as, as I love my, my Father. And He is in me, and therefore I love you. And that's why I'm telling you this. And if I'm telling you the truth, that's the true love. Love is truth. Truth is love. If God is within you, you are going to give that away. You have to give your life like Christ gave his life for us. That's the example. Do you understand, guys? It's, it's round. It's full circle. If you're, if you're just saying, oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to be poofed away from all this evil in the world. And that's all I got to do. I just kick back and then have my beer, drink my cig you know, drink my beer, smoke my cigarettes, eat, eat anything I want. Uh, you know, I don't have to obey the commandments anymore because Christ took that away and I believe in Christ, so that's all I got to do. I just got to kick back and wait for me to be poofed away in, in, into heaven. <laughs> oh my God. That's the most selfish, evil thing I've ever heard of in my life, guys. And if, if the Holy Spirit is not telling, giving you the spirit of truth and letting you see that, then you don't have Christ. You don't have the Holy Spirit. How can you be so selfish to say that you're going to abandon all the lost sheep that are on this earth by just accepting Christ and then doing nothing? You have to give your life away in order to save it. Read your Bible, guys. None of you do. Very few. And the few of you that do are, are spreading a lie from, from Satan. All these visions and dreams of rapture stuff, guys, it, it's very clear. God's going to come in his wrath and destroy the tares first. He's going to throw them into the furnace. That means if it comes by earthquake or by nuclear bombs or whatever, that God will allow, because only him, he's the one that's going to say, okay, this is the day you're going to die. This is the time, this is the minute, this is the day, this is the hour you're going to die. Same thing, with it's all in his control. and It's the same way. This is what the Holy Spirit is showing me. If you're in a city that's going to be nuked, all the tares and the evil ones that have, that have rejected Christ Jesus and the so-called self-confessed Christians that have been falsely led down the primrose wide path, all the ones not giving their life every single day through Christ to their neighbor in love, all of them are going to perish in, in the bombs that drop. But his believers, his elect, his true believers, they're going to be protected with a supernatural like shield over them. And they're going to be able to walk right through it just like nothing. Just like, just like Daniel in the, in the lion's den. Like nothing's even happening. They're going to be able to walk right through it. Because why? He's, Jesus Christ said he's going to take the evil out of the world. I think I have one right here. Here we go. Jesus said, look at this, guys. Jesus said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. John 17, 15. Right there, guys, it proves it. Jesus' own words. He says, he's going to protect you from evil out of this, in this world. But he's going to take the evil out. We're going to stay here. We're going to stay here until the end and do his good work for him. And we're going to walk this earth and bring others to Christ. Because he, God loves us so much, he will do anything, and he needs our help as true believers to bring the lost into him up until the very end. And in the meantime, yeah, this Antichrist is going to come to power, and he's going to try to slaughter us, true believers, trying to bring the lost back to Christ. 
He's going to be trying to slaughter us all the time, but I think it's going to be something like this. And this is what, I don't know this, thus saith the Lord did not tell me this. This is what my whole, Han, store, Han, someone at the store. So, so, uh, just let, let's say, uh, this is what I think he's going to do for the believers that are bringing other lost to Christ in the end. And this is just what my Holy Spirit's telling me, and it could be far off. But this is what, because God has to have a way to protect us, but yet he also says that they, we, there will be saints, martyrs that are, that are killed by the Antichrist from these death squads going after the true believers in those end times, right? So I think we are going to be impervious with a, some kind of supernatural unseen invisible holy armor that protects us from like nuclear bombs conventional weapons of all kinds but something like the slow moving close blade like a guillotine or a sword or a knife or a machete would then kill us that's just what my spirit's saying is that you have to be face to face with the evil one that's going to kill you with a slow blade that goes through, like, uh, if you ever seen uh, the first Dune, the movie the Dune, where if you have this shield that's surrounding you, uh, the only thing that can penetrate it is the slow blade that can penetrate, penetrate the shield, right? That's something what I think is going to be. So you can look your killer in the eye and say you love him and bless and pray for him as he's killing you because that's what God tells us to do is to bless and pray for thine enemy because to the very end God tells Jesus in his words tell us to do that he tells us to pray for and love thine enemy but he's not going to make it easy for them to kill us when we're doing God's work, right? So the Antichrist is going to, these death squads, they're going to learn eventually that once they do find us, they have to individually go up to us, look us in the eye with the slow blade through God's holy uh, armor and kill us that way. Because we, there's many of us that will die in Jesus Christ's name in the end. There's no doubt. But that's the road that I think the Holy Spirit is leading me to believe. Only through Jesus Christ and the, and the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Yes, my love. Make your own decision, hon. So, as I, was, as I was saying, yeah, just that's fine, hon. Whatever you decide. So, I'm going to let you guys go there, but my heart, more and more, that because I've been praying, asking the Holy Spirit to make me understand loving thy neighbor, right? And how Christ loved the world so much, and how Father God loved the world so much that he sent his son and sacrificed his son for us, right? We are supposed to have the same mercy and the same love feeling for every single person on this planet. And I've been trying to ask Christ and the Holy Spirit to bring that kind of love of Christ into my heart so I can more understand the way God was. Because that's what Christ tells us to do. Use Him as an example. Become Him. Become holy. Get all this flesh out. And pray and repent daily. Get the flesh, this fleshly desires and wants. It's all evil, guys. Without Christ, we're evil. Evil and wicked in all, every single way. Through the Holy Spirit, it's the only way. That new man, that new person in Christ is the only way we're going to be saved, guys. And I mean in everything. That's why even fasting, I'm down to one meal a day. And the, the more that we're able to fast and the longer that we're able to fast the better and the closer to Christ that we're going to become. Because a constant long-suffering, he says it so many times, long-suffering is denying the flesh of what it wants. And it wants every 
lavish, luxurious, evil, self-indulging thing that there is on this planet. That's, that's what the flesh wants. If we didn't, the more we deny it, the closer we come to Christ, guys. So anyways, that's what's going on. It's your choice. We're at the very end, guys. There's going to be a massive, and it's going to be overnight. And it, I think it's going to be this year, sometime this year. It's going to be overnight, and everything that you even po thought possible for your future is going to end and change overnight. You're going to lose everything. And it's, you're going to decide at that point, what are you going to do? In, in complete hopelessness for the future, what are you going to do? Turn to Christ? Become more evil? And turn to, even to Satan even more so? And join the death squads with, with the Antichrist and Satan to kill off the, the rest of the believers? What are you going to do? Or are you going to take a suicide and join Satan in hell? If you take a suicide, that, that's what's going to happen. Are you going to hide in your bunker and, and, and do nothing like you do right, like the, like the false churches of the world telling you to do right now? It's just accept Christ and then just kick back and do your own thing. That's just as bad as taking a suicide because that's what you're doing because you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven by doing nothing. So you have to give your life away like Christ gave his life away so I love you guys absolutely why because the father loves you therefore I love you because the father and Jesus Christ is, is within me and that's the truth guys just read your red letter edition to your Bible focus on Jesus word pray so I love you guys so much and God bless you always bye bye